Gluttony, in the broader sense, is probably the most suitable way to describe the narcissist's insatiable hunger, relentless pursuit, and excessive preoccupation in where they're going to get their next fix of narcissistic supply. As for obtaining, this supply provides them the lifeblood necessary in fueling fragile ego of their false self, completely emotionally dependent upon receiving external validation and adoration, having no core sense of worth without it. And it's within this gluttonous need for self-gratification through the consumption of supply that lies the core to the dark pervasive force that drives their every single move. And why understanding the oftentimes skewed intricacies of narcissistic supply is crucial for both those in and out of its clutches, as well as it's from within the knowing and grasping the brutal reality of how narcissists view others, themselves, and the world that helps bring one to be able, faced with radical acceptance, all of it in its entirety, and makes possible for one to finally be able to let go so they can begin healing and move on with their life. Due to the narcissist, this outlandish and delusional sense of entitlement, grandeur, and being so superior and above all other things that eat shit and breathe, they perceive others not to just be inferior, lesser than, or mediocre to their oh-so-delusionally delicious, magnificently fantastical being, but rather not as a being at all. In their fantasy-driven world, they are the only things of existence with feelings, viewing everyone else, and I mean everyone as you would any other object, tool, or item that could provide a service or as an extension of themselves that sole purpose is to serve and fulfill the narcissist every last burning desire and need. Seeing others as having as much intrinsic value as they do a genuine emotional connection. Zero. Zilch. None ya. Just like any other material objects that one has, some may be assigned or deemed more important than others and fluctuate in degree depending on what you're doing or circumstantial happening, as just does the narcissist assign and attach a level of importance or value to their supply. It has nothing to do or established off of your inherent worth or who you are. Anyone and everyone's level of value and importance is interchangeable at any given moment, which is the part that we oftentimes fail to see or forget in the moment. Because we have empathy, we yearn to understand, recognize, and resonate with others. We desire to have a sense of belonging and seek to establish connections and bonds with others, as it's from within these bonds that we equate the degree of meaningfulness and importance of our relationships with others. Narcissist, not so much. Everyone is but a pawn in their delusional, twisted game of life and how much your pawn is interacted with as well as how much value it brings to their game is all contingent upon what you provide and how much you can provide it. Narcissistic supply consists of three components, a trigger, a source, and the source reacting to the trigger that ultimately provides and supplies the lifeblood that they so desperately seek, crave, and need as much as you and I need O2 and H2O. The trigger is something that the narcissist uses to provoke the source by presenting themselves and providing them with information stemming from this fabricated false sense of self. For example, publicity or being the life of the party is a trigger that narcissists commonly use as it draws people to pay attention, hence luring in their sources. The source of supply, obviously, would then be the person. Provoking the source to react to the trigger is the supply, which tends to be one of the common areas that gets skewed and misconceived in the thinking that the person is the supply, but it's not. The supply, never the person. But the biggest misconception comes from within what the two categories or type of supply and its sources are in the narcissist landscape of supply and how the narcissist values or what the narcissist deems as a more fulfilling consumption when referring or what we consider old supply, new supply, grade A, low grade, backup, side piece, recycle, or reused, red light, not so special, or the supply that gets stashed in the shoebox as a stowaway for under the bed, just for good measure to have an event of an emergency. To that, the vast majority of us 
are getting wrong. But these are the breaks. So let's bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Supply in the big picture is anything that the narcissist can use as a way to build up and to validate their fragile ego with to maintain the existence of their false self and to keep Fantasyland Island up and going. Be that in the way of a positive or negative fashion. All supply and its sources fall into two categories. Though each type have different functions and serve for different purposes, they are both viewed and seen through the eyes of the narcissist as interchangeable. Nothing but perished goods to which the narcissist will consume and replenish with new. Primary supply, in its plainest and simplest term, is attention, either positive or negative in nature, that reaffirms their delusions of grandeur, power, and superiority. Attention that reinforces their God complex and fantasies that they have conjured up and associate with as their false yeah. self. Using this information that they gain from the supply as a way to regulate, calibrate, and fine tune their false self that they aren't able to do without external reinforcement as these functions are typically reserved to that of one's true yeah. self. The primary supply can be obtained both publicly and privately and consist of anything from adoration, applause, praise, a compliment on their watch, to infamy, repulsion, or someone flipping them the bird and hatred. Because in their eyes, to be seen as notorious is just as delightful as being renowned. Matter. And it not matter if what they claim to have achieved or being acknowledged for is an extremely exaggerated stretch from the truth or a complete and total utter crock of fabricated BS that they just pulled out of their ass in effort to one-up somebody. It's, it's all cool and still counts, just as long as the source of supply buys in to this bullshit because how things appear are weighted far more than any kind of factual substance. Triggers for primary supply include things such as being a celebrity, having connections with political authorities, being high up in the military, the head of an organization, seen as somebody to that of having a mysterious physique, having ample sexual partners derived from a sense of virility, be it male or female. The sources of primary supply are individuals that are able to be triggered on a casual and random basis. So in a nutshell, primary supply and its sources are entirely and solely about reinforcing their delusional fantasy of being better than all the Greek gods put together, period. Secondary narcissistic supply, on the other hand, is what helps them secure their existence, seen as socially acceptable as someone just living a normal life. Secondary supply consists of having a significant partner or spouse, owning property, being a member of a group, having a professional or any kind of reputation, and flaunting their social status. Sources of secondary supply are significant partners, spouses, children, siblings, parents, friends, co-workers, neighbors, and so on. The role and most important function of the secondary supply is to accumulate and release. And it's within this role and most important function that lies the most degrading and insidious twist to understanding just how jacked up a relationship with these life-draining humanoids really is. As, as while the narcissist is out and about cashing in on all of their sources of primary supply, the secondary source of supply, typically being their significant partner, is sitting back silently accumulating all the narcissist as perceived by themselves to be their greatest moments and highest achievements, kind of like their own little personal memory bank. And when the narcissist primary sources begin to dwindle, disappear, or need a little ego boost after a bad day, the narcissist triggers their secondary sources of supply to release, reminding the narcissist of these moments of glory and in turn helping them regulate their sense of worth. Like, like a puppet sitting in stillness until the puppet master comes along and gives it a yank, commanding it to move. Using your virtues as a cover-up for their vices and a front for their false self to be seen by the world as just your standard average person living a normal life. But this too only lasts for so long when the narcissist gets a knock on the door from reality due to failure, defeats, or setbacks. Your 
sitting in stillness, accumulating collections for their personal memory bank becomes a constant reminder of their failures, whether actual or perceived, in turn creating a narcissistic injury. Now the mere sight of you is unwelcome, but your function remains the same, which is to regulate their sense of worth. So they project their problems, failures, and blame onto you. Now viewing you as nothing but the root of their downfall, as such begin to lash out and devalue on the very qualities that they were drawn to in the first place, making you the bad guy at fault in turn ameliorates their dissonance as they watch the pain well up in your eyes and despair wash across your face from the deliberate hurtfulness in their words and behaviors serves them a reminder and their ability to make you feel how they want you to feel as to make you suffer is to go against your own will and allowing once again for their self-worth to be regulated. But like any other addiction, they need more and more in order to get the same effect or for it to provide the same value. The devaluation becomes more frequent and more harsh, leaving you alone to sit in stillness more often as their need for primary supply too heavily increases. Eventually, getting you to a point where they have tapped you out completely as they have drained the life from your being. No longer are you able to fulfill the lifeblood and without will eventually crumble, to which point they know that you will need to be replaced with a new source of secondary supply. Before Just you know it, they are chasing after the new chicken in the yard oh they will run after it all right doing so without having a shy bone in their body as they go tugging on the tail feathers and emotions getting the best of us not to mention the tight grip of the trauma bond and them brainwashing you and guilt ridden you into thinking that it was all your fault leaving you to hold on to the hope they will get better or come back assuring the narcissist that you will remain somewhere in that fenced in yard when the thrill of chasing after the new chicken is gone or they have plucked it of all its feathers. That sweet piece of meat now looks more like a sight for sore eyes, that they can return and pluck a few more of your feathers until another spring chicken comes along. Because it's not about you, the spring chicken, or the little chicken nugget that'll come after that. Their eyes, you are all suitable for the rotisserie. The number of sources of supply that a narcissist has in their lifetime is staggering and never are they getting supply off of one source at any given point, ever. Everything they do is to remain in their delusional bubble of being the MVP of mankind. And well, it's one thing to entertain them with some attention and be a source to which they can obtain primary supply to stroke their fragile ego. All that takes merely hit them up with a, you're the greatest or, a fuck you. you. For one person to try to keep up with regulating their sense of worth so they can come off appearing human, well, honey, the world would be without chickens before that day ever comes. You are worth and deserve so much more. Don't wait around for these there. demonic gluttonous hawks to make you chicken dinner. Find the gate in that fence and get your ass out of that not so funny farm as fast as humanly possible. Focus on you. Fuck the narcissist.